Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you Grace Naledi Mandisa Pando, and to request that you confer on her the degree Doctor of Philosophy Honoris Causa. The decision by Council and Senate to award her this degree has been taken on the grounds of the following considerations. Grace Naledi Mandisa Pando has had impressive experience in public office since 1994, when she first became a member of parliament. She was, among others, deputy chief whip in the National Assembly, deputy chair and later chair of the National Council of Provinces, as well as national minister of three portfolios, education from 2002 to 2009, thereafter science and technology, and since 2012, home affairs. Minister Pendor received most of her education in exile. After matriculating in Botswana in 1972, she graduated from the University of Botswana and Swaziland. She obtained a master's degree and a diploma in education from the University of London, a diploma in higher education, administration, and leadership from hers, Brian Maur Summer Institute in 1992 and in 1997, a diploma in leadership in development from Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government, as well as a master's degree in general linguistics from Stellenbosch University. She taught English in London and at the University of Botswana and was a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Town a council member and later chancellor of the former Cape Technicon and a member of the University of Fort Hayes Council. Damas in Yera by the Destates Universiteit van Bebuta Tswana was Minister Pandor Voorzitter van die Unie van Democratische Personeelverenigings van 1991 tot 1995 dien sy in die ANC's Westkaapse Onderwijskomitee en was van 1991 tot 1993 voorzitter van die Nationale Onderwijskoordineringskomitee sy Westkaapse uitvoerende lichaam. Sy was uitvoerende voorzitter van die Desmond Tutu Onderwijs Trust, voorzitter van die Westkaapse Schoolbouw Trust en die Tertiaire Onderwijsfonds van Zuid-Afrika. Sy is ook ondervoorzitter van die Gesamentlijke Onderwijs Trust, sy raad van trustees, as parlementslid was sy onder meer samenroeper van die subcomitee oor hoer onderwijs. In 2002 het sy lid van die ANC's nationaal uitvoerende komitee geword en dien ook in die partijse subcomitees oor onderwijs, communicatie, die archief en politieke opvoeding. Mr. Chancellor, during a tenure as National Minister of Education, she reintroduced full bursaries for teacher training the Funza Lushaka Scheme, a national literacy program that is now acknowledged as one of the most successful literacy programs in South Africa and initiated a reform of the outcomes-based curriculum for schools. As Minister of Science and Technology, she was the driving force in establishing the Census Space Operations Directorate, which houses the CSIR Satellite Application Center. She also successfully negotiated the allocation of the, great, of the greater part of the Square Kilometer Array radio telescope project to South Africa. The project includes an array of dish receptors extending into eight other African countries from a central core region in the Karoo, with further mid-frequency aperture arrays as well as a smaller array of dish receptors and a number of low-frequency aperture arrays in Australia. Mr. Chancellor, I request that you confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy honoris causa Grace Naledi Mandisa Pandor for her impressive contribution to public office, among others as Chair of the National Council of Provinces and as Cabinet Minister responsible for three different portfolios, as well as for serving as a driving force in the transformation of education and the promotion of science and technology in South Africa.
was the ch chancellor, uh, some argue that states are not in the business of virtues. And, the, and they miss the fact that modern societies are much more complex than the old ones that you could force in a certain direction. So uh, the behavior of political elites create inclusive or exclusive communities, open friend societies or close friend societies. And I was honored to see Dr. Pandor in different roles, but all of them political. First, I observed it during my term as President of the South African Council of Churches when we had our regular meetings with the Cabinet of President Mbeki, and recently in my positions as Vice Rector and now Vice Chancellor of Stellenbosch University. And I can tell you what I have seen is a person that embodies political decency. A decency that is seriously political and a political reality that is seriously decent. So, uh, Dr. Pandor, we drink on you and we wish you well as the struggle for political decency is not yet over. Chancellor, uh, Vice Chancellor Botman, Deputy Minister Chahan, thank you so much for being here, my dear colleague, all the distinguished guests, my, my family, my husband Sharif, my daughter and my son Alan and Aisha, and uh, You'll forgive me for mentioning my VIP protectors. I spend more time with them than with my husband. <laughs> uh, and among them, longest serving is Officer Roland here, who's been looking after me for many years and tolerating a lot. Um, well, when you're honored in this way, many, many thoughts go through your head. And uh, I have been thinking really about friends and life. And I began to think about that because I started thinking about my parents. I'm really, we are what we are because of our parents. We grew up in exile over 30 years out of our country our father was very busy working for the African National Congress, traveling all over. He would appear now and again at Easter or Christmas. So we sort of associated him with Christmas, you know, Father Christmas or something. <laughs> uh, but the person who was with us all the time in freezing London, hot Lusaka, very hot Botswana, was our mother. And she made sure that we had education. We're seven children, all of us are graduates, and it's our mother who did that. And today I think about it. But as I reflect on my life, I also think about my own friends and what I've learned from them. I think about people like Nasima Bacha. Actually, Nasima is more deserving of honors in South Africa than many people imagine. She's uh, one of these. Uh, people who spent time thinking about how we could ensure diversity and excellence for the most marginalized and vulnerable in our society. How do we ensure more talented young black people have the opportunity to access higher education? And she came up with a fantastic notion that actually, Bantu education was not able to identify talent and that if we relied on the outcomes of Bantu education, we would be failing to identify young people who had the promise of being able to succeed in higher education. And so she devised an alternative 
access path for young people. A set of tests which would allow young people emerging from that awful education system to write exams that would allow them to access institutions that would never have considered them because the tests that were devised were able to identify whether these young people had the academic potential to succeed in higher education. And Nasima, you've made an indelible mark on many young people's lives, and we thank you for that. So when, when I think about Nasima, I remember things like arriving in the city of Cape Town, working at the University of Cape Town, um, and us discussing where are the young black people? And not a lot of us knew, you know, where Kayalicha was. Uh, you won't remember sort of uh, late 80, 89 I, I arrived, late 89, back home. And uh, at the time, the vice chancellor at the University of Cape Town um, asked the deputy vice chancellor, Professor Woods, to be the purchaser of the house I would live in because as a black person, I wasn't allowed to live where I wanted to live. And that's kind of how I entered Cape Town. But we went around to a place called Kayalicha and started looking for talent. And we discovered something quite amazing, that many young people at grade 12 in school were not thinking of accessing higher education because they thought it's something closed off to them as black children. So even the number ones, two and threes in their classes would never consider applying because they didn't believe it was for them. So part of our job was to persuade young black people to fill in an application form for university, to identify talent, get them to write the alternatives admission test and access higher education. And our proudest moment was the day one of the young men we identified got the Dean's Medal for Engineering at the University of Cape Town. I still remember that. But anyway, uh, I only have a few minutes. Other things I've been thinking about. I've been thinking more and more about the courageous and outstanding personalities that our country has produced. And in this week, of course, foremost among those is President Nelson Mandela, a man who made an extraordinary and indelible contribution to South Africa, and I believe the South Africa of today, as well as the South Africa of tomorrow. As I think about courageous personalities, I remember people such as Professor Esther Hazer, Dr. Fancel Slabert, and Professor Khilomi, who were not afraid to challenge orthodoxy not afraid to be different and to reach out to fellow South Africans in Lusaka when it was not comfortable or popular or easy to do so. And many of them came from this very institution and exhibited an amazing courage. I think of Dr. Stuart Saunders, Professor Jake Scherbel, Dr. Franklin Son. I think of Professor Van Veek who led this institution. They led some of the charge in challenging and altering the apartheid design of higher education. They stood for change in different ways, using varied strategies, all of them seeking to make a difference. I think of my grandfather, Professor Z.K. Matthews. I think of Professor John Tengu, Tengu Jabavu. I think of Professor Jordan all from University of Fort Air, who despite the temptation of acquiescing to the privileges offered to African intellectuals, took the decision to sacrifice career and family for the good of all South Africans. I recall all these leaders due to their link to higher education. I believe personally that there's something extraordinary about education, and in particular, about higher education. Universities, I think, produce world leaders, produce writers and creators of great renown, produce grand economists, produce great jurists, and produce leaders of worth. 
Nelson Mandela came out of the university. Every leader of worth you can imagine has come out of higher education. Thus, we must never neglect to invest in higher education and to extol it as a sector that can assist us to ensure that the highest values and ideals subsist in our society. So as I accept this honor, I appeal to all of you to never allow the diminution of higher education or the erosion of its ability to lay the basis for societal transformation. I wish to thank the University of Stellenbosch for the great honor that they have bestowed upon me. I thank my family for the unwavering support they have given to me in my search to care better for others. I thank in particular my long-suffering husband, Shari. I wish the Chancellor, Dr. Rupert, the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Botman, the Deputy Vice-Chancellors, his colleagues, members of Council and Senate, well in continuing to enhance excellence and intellectual rigor at this, one of the premier institutions of South Africa and Africa, faced with the challenges South Africa faces, and I'm sure within it having the ability to continue to address the fundamental aspects of transformation which Madiba has left as the task we must complete. So I ask you to rise, charge your glasses, and let us salute the University of Stellenbosch. The University of Stellenbosch. Thank you very much. <laughs>